What is up guys? It's The Real Deal. Welcome back to the channel. Guys, today we're going to be looking at Pytheon and he is an insane champion. Top, top tier. If you've pulled him or fused him, he is a great champion and 100% worth investing in. So let's just have a quick look at the reviews, see what the rest of the world are saying. So 5, 4.9, 4.8, 4.9, 4.8, 4.7 literally it looks like it can just be used everywhere so the build that we're gonna be looking at today i'm using him for hydro nightmare um he's just such a hard carry but i'm also using him in some pve content as well and i'm pretty sure you could put him into almost any content in the game and he'll be able to carry like doom tower bosses we'll go through that later but i'm pretty sure you could use him to carry you in almost every single doom tower boss um, Iron Twins, apart from Spirit Affinity, I'm sure you could build a level 15 team with him in it. So just before we go through gear and masteries, let's look at his skills and see what he actually does. So passive overlay, allies receive 5% less damage from for sorry from skills for each buff on them. So A1s means that they will still just do the same amount of damage, but big skills like your A2s and your A3s are going to have reduced damage on them. And this stacks up to 25%. This is huge. Um, one champion that really stands out to me. So if you have Duchess, and you have to be very lucky to have Duchess, but if you've got Duchess and Pytheon, the damage mitigation from both their passives together is just on another level. But yeah, this is a really, really strong passive. And that's what we're going to be using in Hydra to help keep the team alive. A3 revives all dead allies with 50% HP and 50% turn meter. That is a really, really good revive. And it's on a four turn, uh, four turn cooldown, which is very, very low. So it means we can cycle through this very, very quickly. And it's bringing in a strengthen buff as well for two turns. So that's going to help keep our allies alive with strengthen, but it's also going to work very nicely with our passive. A2 shed skin. So this is on a three turn cooldown as well. So also another very, very low cooldown. Removes all debuffs from allies. So he's a cleanser. Uh, then heals them by 10% of their max HP. Heals each ally an extra 5% of their max HP for each debuff removed. I mean, this is just huge. Like in Hydra, the head of poison throws out loads of poisons. That means you are going to heal your team a ton. Um, also places block debuffs on allies for two per turns as well. This is one of the strongest buffs in the game. And yeah, it is just so good. And again, this is going to work really nicely with our passive. Also has a really strong A1. Attacks one enemy two times. Heals the ally with the lowest HP by 5% of this champion's max HP after each hit. So what you want to do is you want to put a lot of HP on your Pytheon. That means that they're going to heal your allies or Pytheon even more. And what you can do with this as well is if you are in arena and you use python in arena it's a really good school uh stall tactic so basically python um if you make sure you put counter attack on them um through the masteries they are going to counter attack and just keep healing themselves up and it's gonna be really hard for the enemy to take you out um, and then you can just revive the whole team and just go again so so sick all right so gear we've gone for stalwart and immortal so Stalwart is a really, really good set on Python. And I feel like it's a set, a lot of people sleep on it and they forget how good it is. So especially for um, Hydra, we are going to reduce the damage from air we attack by 30%. I mean, on top of our passive as well, we are just, you know, just avoiding so much damage. And even against like the head of wrath that can really smack, it's not going to do anything to us. Um, and then we've got an immortal set just for extra HP a little bit of healing to help us keep topped up because we've got no other way of keeping us healed up so we'll go through the gear so gloves we've got hp gloves with uh subs in speed a little bit of a, a bit of an awful roll there but ignore that uh, and then we've got speed and defense on the chest very nice and then we've got hp uh, mythical boots pretty insane um yeah as you can see though i've not really glyphed his gear up too much so that's something I could improve on. We've got HP on the ring and then uh, subs of D-roll. Um, sorry. And then we've got rolls on the uh, defense as well. Very nice. 
And then we've got defense amulet and it is a reaction piece as well. So not the best sub rolls, but it's good for arena, helps us stay alive. And then we've got a resistance banner as well, just to help us with the head of mischief. And we'll talk about it in a moment. And let's just whack on my Hydra stuff so you can look at the full stats. So we've got 74k HP. We've got 300 and sorry, 3,600 defense, 263 speed. And then, you know, the next stats that matter are resistance. So we've got 433 resistance. And then the rest of the stats don't matter. I'm just going to turn it off as well, just so you can guys can see what it looks like when we're not in Hydra. But we've almost got 400 resistance. So this build is purely for Hydra Nightmare and can be used in PvE content. But if you're going to use it in Arena, you need 600, 700, 800 resistance minimum if you really want to use Python for that. And again, if you're going to you know, use Python in Arena, you want Stone Skin or Bolster Set. I, I, would, I probably would prefer Bolster Set because it counters Uko and other champions that require to like strip a team and also it means they can't place like block buffs uh, because they need to remove all the buffs before they can do that. So he is really, really strong in a bolster set as well. But the problem about bolster set is it's kind of pay to play. So we, we don't have it as free to play. So blessings. So we've gone for light and cage and this is great for Hydra because we've got all that resistance. It means that we're going to have another buff on us for the head of mischief to target us. Um, but again, if you're going for um, Arena, it's got to be Polymorph. Um, you know, I, go, I guess if you're not six-star Polymorph, the other options would be Life Harvest. So basically when they revive, that is going to reduce the enemy's HP. So that's a really strong one. And then the other option that I'd really like, well, Temple Change is pretty good because that's going to slow them down. And Warden of the Fallen... This is going to put bone armor on us and it just makes us super tanky. And yeah, it's just really difficult for the enemy to deal with. So masteries. And he's not, we've not fully mastered him. Um, yeah, I should, I'd probably put it in deterrence or cycle revenge. Yes, yeah, so these are the masteries that we're rolling with. And yeah, improved parry. This is for arena. It is one of my favorite um, like masteries. It is just so good. Reducing critical hits on us by 8% is a huge, huge mastery. Uh, rejuvenation, just to help us heal ourselves up. Uh, delay death, just reduces damage over time. Retribution to get those counterattacks. But this can cause issues in Hydra. Um, if you don't have a way to deal with the Head of Fear, then if you counterattack it, you are going to be eating a lot of fears and it can mess things up for you. Then in the support tree, we've gone for extra HP. We want lay of hands to improve the healing that we do. Um, healing savior as well. So this is going to heal any champion that, you know, they're a little bit low on HP. That means that we're going to heal them even more. Rapid response is great because we do throw out quite a lot of buffs. And when those buffs expire, that can boost our turn meter. Uh, we've also gone for Laura Steel just to help with a little bit of extra HP. And then lasting gifts is great option. Help keep that strength and that block debuffs on our on us and our teammates for even longer. So we've looked at the gear, we've looked at the masteries, we've looked at the blessings. Now let's do um we're gonna do a run in Hydra and then we'll do like a dragon run. And I'll show you like a level 10 team that I use using Python, and you'll see how hard he actually carries. Okay, so this is Hydra Nightmare, and this is the team that we're rolling with. We've got Nekmo, we've got Uko, we've got G-Nuts, Sissia, Morley, and of course, Pythion. So I'm not going to talk about the other champions today. We are purely going to focus on Pythion. Um, so this is a full auto team on Hydra Nightmare, and there's no setup required. It's literally just drop them in and let them roll. Um, but yeah, so Pythion. Um, as you can see, we've got no real way to deal with the Head of Fear, but that's okay. We still get the one key. And Pythion is going to be healing, is going to be cleansing. Um, and do you know what? He does so much damage and mitigation. Like you can just see, like here, when those AoE hits come in, the enemy are not really doing a lot of damage to us. But what I'm going to do is let's skip ahead. Let's see if I can find um, a clip 
with the head of wrath just absolutely slamming the team you just see like how much damage and mitigation there is okay perfect so here's the head of wrath we're on 14 stacks and any moment now it's going to turn around and smack our team oh, unfortunately pythons the one is eaten so that's no good uh let's let's skip forward okay we're on 12 stacks we've got some buffs oh here comes in the hydra head barely made a scratch on the team and he's going to pop off again and as you can see like really did not do a lot of damage um but yeah so what i'm going to do is let's skip to the head to the very end and just sort of look at you know sort of how the team did and yeah how long it took as well there we go guys booyah 43 million so this team you know is full auto and because of rng it can vary so much it can be 40 million it can be 60 million but uh, unfortunately uh necmo got eaten quite early on which messed things up a bit but not bad at all i mean gina 17 mil sissia 14 mil but yeah a lot of work's getting done here um but yeah and pytheon you can see even though you know they've done 1.7 mil and they've been out healed by gina Necmo is doing a lot of healing here with Leech as well. But a lot of this is down to Pytheon. Pytheon is doing so many revives throughout the entire fight. Um, but yeah, so, like she, she, he is such a hard carry. Like seriously, such a great champion. And you know, I just want to say this team's, I think maybe, so some people might disagree with this. I'd say if you played the game for a long time, this is quite an accessible team. Uh, Necmo was a guaranteed champion, only 15 sacred. G Nut Fusion, Python was a fusion. Uko was a fusion. Everyone can get Molly from the Faction Guardian shop. And Sissia is the only champion you need to pull. And she could be replaced by so many different damage dealers. Just anyone that does HP burn or um, like Mich Michi, um, he could step in. The guy that does hex and stuff, Ghost Rider. He would be a great option for this as well. Was it Minanaki? So I don't have him on my account, so I don't say his name often. But anyway, let's do um, let's do a dragon run as well, and I'll show you the team that I'm rolling with that as well. So sorry, guys, almost forgot to do the Doom Tower bosses. So Magma Dragon, easy. Frost Spider, easy. Neth Spider, yep. Okay, Scarab, probably not a great option there. Eternal Dragon, yes. Um. Yep, Griffin, great option there as well. So Dreadhorn, Bommel, Dark Fae, I'm going to say no. There's definitely better options. But, you know, you can see that he's basically going to help carry you through all, almost, you know, like over, over like 60, 60%, 70% of the Doom Tower bosses. Like, he is such a good champion. Okay, so this is the team that I run for Dragon 10. It's not a very fast team. Um, I'm trying to focus on other content right now, but it's got 100% success rate, and a lot of it is because of Pythion. Pythion makes this a super safe run. Um, but yeah, so let's just quickly look at the team again. So, of course, Gnut's in here again. He speeds up things so much. Absolute beast for all PvE content. We've got Elver as well, who pairs up really nicely with Pythion. Uh, then we've got Seer, of course, like God tier champion of clearing waves. And then we've got Lydia, who brings in that aoe decrease defense and weaken but um, yeah the waves are pretty easy what we'll do is we'll skip ahead straight to the boss and just see you know just watch the boss try and slam us and just watch pytheon keep the team alive but also just constantly with that aoe revive as well hey guys so you can see we've got loads of poisons on us and hopefully any minute now there we go we get a huge cleanse and a huge heal from Pythion from the A2. Um, and hopefully we're just going to get a big hit from the boss right now. And you'll just see again the damage and mitigation. You know, Seer and Gina are both pretty squishy. Okay, unfortunately we, we got it got stripped from Seer. But let's go again, guys. And hopefully you'll be able to see sort of the real power from Pythion. And again... Okay, so he's coming there with the heal. Elva's just chucked in a load of buffs, and they do pair up really, really nicely together. And look, big smack. Okay, so did drop the entire team there. But um, yeah. But yeah, Python and Elvia, they make this super safe. This is a 100% success rate. D 
team comp, unfortunately, it is a little slow. I think it's about three and a half minutes, four minutes. So yeah, let's come back to the end and just sort of look at seeing how everyone's done for this run. And there we go, guys. So three minutes, 48 seconds, not bad at all. Um, so Elva has actually outhealed Python by quite a bit. But that's not to say that Python's not doing anything. Of course, Python is still carrying and helping Elva really, really hard. But yeah, so yeah, and Gina, wow, has like really out damaged Seer, considering Seer's doing AoE damage and it is enemy max HP on the waves. But of course, Gina's like just taking over when it comes down to the boss. Yeah, so do you know what? Let's, let's do some PV. Let's, uh, let's, sorry, let's do some PVP as well. Um, I'll see if I can build like a go second team with Python. Okay, so this is the team. We've got Lydia, who is built for PvE content in a hybrid build, like 400 accuracy, 400 resistance. We've got a Nuke Valk, Nuke Hepfrek, and we've got Python. So like I said, Python doesn't have a lot of resistance or enough resistance for Arena. But we've got Marichka here, who is one of the most annoying champions to go against, especially if there's another reviver in the team. So hopefully we're going to get the W. Um, it's very rare that I play a go second team in um, live arena just because I don't really have the champions. Wow. They just dropped our entire team. All right. Maybe that wasn't a good showcase of what um, of Python can do because Hetfrake just came in and wiped it. Let's go again, guys. All right, guys. This is going to be a really hard one. They got Cfi, Rotos, Elva, and Baron. Um, but we're going to bring in Uko for strips and second revive and hoping that Ulmer Death Knight can suck up a lot of that damage. All right, so obviously they're going to go first. And okay, we've managed to cut in though. Considering this team has like 400 um, like team power, they're pretty slow. Okay, and oh, so I think we're going to quite easily get the win here. My Hepfrek is on another level, boys. And here we go. Bush. Okay. I think it's been really hard for me to showcase Python. I just don't have the sort of other support champions that you need for Arena to really make him stand out. Um, but, you know, there, there are so many good team comps. Let's just see. Let's just do a reset. Okay, that is an annoying team comp right there. Um, it's definitely a stall comp, but not the strongest here. That That is something you don't want to go against. Again, that's going to be really difficult to get through. You know, on with Death Knight is going to be soaking up damage. Uh, Python and Duchess is going to stop like the AoE damage. It means Leoros is protected and Leoros is going to be doing a lot of damage. And let's just have a quick look at 3v3. It's middle of the week, but there might be some teams. So there's a Python in that one. And a Python there. And you can see, like, he's a really, really popular champion. Literally everyone's using him. And this guy is using that same team comp that we sort of saw before. So they brought Mithrala in. But yeah, all I can say is Python is a great champion. You need to make sure you invest in him. Thank you so much for watching the video, guys. Please leave me a cheeky thumbs up. Make sure you smash, smash, smash that subscribe. And I'll see you all in a video soon. Peace.